I have an itch and it's going to turn my whole neck red, but that's just, that's just the way things are. Oh my heavens. Oh my heavens. What is up guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to be doing Kelly Gooch's original tag that she founded years and years and years ago. It's called If I Could Only Keep One. And it is about going through your makeup stash, pretending, pretending that it disappeared. And it's not about your favorite items. So it's not my top shelf necessarily. It's really about practicality, multi-usability, <laughs> multi-utility, and also just like the most bang for your buck. Like if you were gonna go kind of repurchase everything in your collection, but like only one, what would be the thing that you felt like was the best use of your money that you were gonna get the most use out of for the most makeup looks? So I have collected one of each of those. I actually did a full like cutaway so that you guys can see me applying each one as well. And definitely check out Kelly's channel. I had the pleasure of meeting her when I was in New York City this last time. Can confirm she is a Disney princess in real life in every good way possible. I just, I love this tag because it really makes me think differently about my stash. I just like when things make me think differently about my stash. That, and before we jump in, I want to go ahead and thank today's sponsor. Guys, you know, Ana Luisa has a forever home here on my channel. I am an ambassador for them. And it is because it is the jewelry that I wear all the time and it really hits all the marks for me. Ana Luisa is a carbon neutral, sustainable, gold plated jewelry company. So it's like beautiful, affordable, sustainable, very, very like stylish, but also there are a lot of different styles of jewelry on their website. Everything imaginable, lots of different kind of styles for different ages, styles for different styles, you know, minimalist versus maximalist, things like that. Like if you want to wear dainty things, I like to switch my look up a lot. I love to be able to kind of stack things, but to the extent that we're talking about shopping for jewelry, I am not my primary customer at the moment. It is a big gift giving holiday coming up and that is Mother's Day. It could be for any mother in your life. It could be for your actual person mother. It could be for a person mother, a pet mother, a plant mother. <laughs> it's really just about finding that really cool unique gift that feels really like heartfelt. They all start at $39 and they're running a sale, buy one, get one, 40% off on their website right now. So thought I would share with you guys my you know recent additions to my stack. You guys have seen these quite a bit in videos recently. And I am just loving the very like feminine flair that I'm getting from this new set of hoops that I got. So it's like these big hoops and I put them underneath my plugs and then these smaller hoops and I just put them in my third hole there. My second holes are quite uneven and that's why I wear this other one, this little climber from Ana Luisa. Pretty much all the jewelry that you see me wear unless it's like my wedding ring <laughs> or like something that's been installed by a piercer is Ana Luisa because I just rely on the quality and it's the kind of stuff that I reach for every day. It's like exciting for me to put it on. You know what I mean? Like this was my first ever item that I got from Ana Luisa years ago and I still wear it like all the time because it's just the variety. You know what I mean? Like all my rings and everything. I love being able to just kind of mix it up and stack things. And then also I just got this little ear cuff. That's what that's called. Cause I, I love this really big one but then balancing it out with this and it just kind of gives this cool like visual maximalism, like a visual almost like busyness to my ears, but it makes me feel really adorned. I like feeling adorned. It's something that I get from my grandmother. <laughs> Speaking of Mother's Day, my grandmother Frida, she just wore tons and tons of gold jewelry and my family joked about it. You know, they said she was kind of a magpie and things like that, but I really am like proud to have inherited that. So I love the magpie-ness. I love the timelessness. I love being able to give something that's like heartfelt and picked out, but at the same time, it's so small. It's so delicate. It's something that they remember you every time that they put it on and it's all recycled gold. Ana Luisa only uses recycled gold and it really, really cuts down on the environmental impact. Like I said, they're carbon neutral and it's also what makes their jewelry so affordable. So yeah, I hope that you guys will check them out again. Click my link below to shop the buy one, get one 40% off sale. And thank you as always to Ana Luisa for partnering with me for this part of the video. So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and jump into my makeup collection if I could only keep one. So beginning with complexion, I 
chose these two things thinking that they were going to be the most versatile combo if I wanted to be able to only have one foundation and have it work in multiple coverage situations. However, after applying it the way that I did, it is the only thing after the fact that I would change my mind on. And it is these two things. I have absolutely no misgivings about this. This is the In Beauty Face Glaze. It's an amazing primer and also an adjuster for coverage levels to mix in with your foundations and things like that. Mix it in with anything, really, to get a thinner, more manipulable version of the formula. Now, this is phenomenal, mixes so agreeably with so many different things. I know this wasn't the issue. I mixed it with this thinking, okay, I know Kosas, the new revealer foundation can go to pretty much, mm, you know, full coverage for me. I could get glam out of it if I want to, but I can also thin it out with something like the face glaze, except when I did, it got too mucky. It was just something that I felt like was a little bit risky when I was powdering it. I felt like it was going to give me a little bit of cake face or a little bit of that funky drag when I tried to put things on top of it. And so this is the only thing that I'm changing my mind on. And I would absolutely like this was the second place like in my mind and it moved to first place after this because I've used it many, many times in this situation. If I could only keep one foundation, it would be the Shantikai Future Skin Gel foundation. I have it in the shade Aura. Yes, many things are more fun than this and more exciting than this and things that I actually use more than this. But if I had to choose one that I could get the most use out of, that's also going to be something that my skin is going to like wearing every single day, it's going to be this. It is oil-free. It's like 96% water. I don't know. Something crazy like that. It's just an incredibly beautiful finish on the skin. There's a reason that this is a fave fave for so many people and it's frustratingly expensive, but that is why it would only be one, right? <laughs> so yeah, it would be the Shantikai Future Skin. And I'm sorry, Kosas. It's beautiful, but it didn't give me the versatility that I thought that it was going to. This is an example of something that I do use every single day and also I consider it to be the one that I would keep and that is the item beauty air hug concealer I have it in the shade 110 I chose this over all of my other concealers because it's creamy fullish coverage like something that I could really doctor the coverage level of a foundation that I was using or just use it on its own on top of the face glaze and I feel like it's the most agreeable in the most amount of situations it is not as satin in finish as the Kosas. It has more coverage than the Thrive. It's less dewy than the Pat McGrath, but it is also extremely hydrating. It's wonderful underneath my eyes. It blends like a dream and I could absolutely see wearing it as a full coverage foundation if I wanted to. And this shade match, I know that their shade range is pretty weird, but 110, if you are my skin twin, <laughs> some people in my comments say that they're my skin twin. If you're my skin twin, this is the best match on a concealer I've ever gotten. And it's not like a brightening match, it's like a skin tone match. So that's what I go for lately. I really am like very over the like really, really brightened under eyes. I feel like it kind of exaggerates age and uh, like sunspots and stuff. And so I'm very, very into things that completely camouflage into my skin and the shade 110 does. And if you're really, really interested in that concealer, I love it because it is so great, but also affordable. It's only $18 at Sephora, but the Tarte, it's exclusive to Ulta, but the Tarte Ultra Creamy Shape Tape is extremely similar to this, but it's like $30. Like Tarte has just a really, really crazy opinion of their products. I really don't think they should be that expensive. That's why I focus on this, but if you really want a very, very similar formula and you can find a discount on it, the Ultra Creamy Shape Tape is very similar. Another one that's like, <laughs> of course I use it all the time. This is no surprise to anybody, but there will be a caveat. This is the Patrick Ta Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo in She Statuesque but I'm shoehorning my preferences into the challenge here because I wouldn't choose the powder bronzer. I wanted everything to be a unified face of makeup and I wouldn't go for a powder bronzer with this face of makeup. I ended up powdering it, but it's not where I would go with bronzer. So I am literally only choosing the contour. This is my favorite contour. If I were to go by the rules, like the, the super, super rules, you know, I would either go for the Uma or the Salt New York contour, but this is obviously the one that I reach for the most and it is the most versatile. I feel like I can wear it on 
no coverage. I can wear it on full coverage. It goes on top of things. It goes under things. It's just a really, really beautiful formula and it goes really, really well with my skin tone. There are also a, a variety of shades in this and I do believe that they just came back in stock during the Sephora sale. So that is what I would pick for my contour. And the reason that I say that is because my bronzer this is the one. It's also the one that my child got into. Good thing there's no like precision required to use this, you know? But this is the Rare Beauty Warm Wishes Power Boost Bronzer Stick, Power Boost being the shade. It's so great. It is very dry on the skin, so it's almost like a powder, but it is manipulable like a cream. And so I feel like it agrees with more makeup looks. And I love the color. I love the color. I also love that it's so light on the skin because it is so silicone-y feeling. It is only a cream insofar as the delivery system and kind of the way it spreads on the skin, but it is not wet at all, at all, at all. And so I feel like it is so easy. It's very easy to use. They do call it an effortless bronzer stick. It's effortless looking, but it's also effortless to apply. I love when things require so little blending. Like I can put a lot of it on and it still blends really easily and it doesn't blend off or blend away. I really can't say enough about this little bronzer stick. I feel like they nailed it. And you know, it's like, if I were to like create my own compact, it would be that contour and then this bronzer somehow like, you know, just magnetize them together. <laughs> All right, for blush, I did choose a cream and a powder. And you guys, if, if you make me, if you make me decide on only one, I will tell you which one it is, but these are the two. This is the Westman Atelier Baby Cheeks Blush Stick in Petal. Just absolutely the easiest color for me to wear. I really feel like there is in the Westman Atelier collection an easiest color to wear for everybody. There are just really dialed in one and done blush shades that build. They build so beautifully and they don't have a super, super creamy dewy finish on them. That can kind of be an issue sometimes with full faces of cream makeup is just that everything starts to get really, really shiny, but that's not the case with this. I feel like it does have a really nice hybrid finish and it builds so well. I've said this a million times, but when I did pack an extremely small, bag of makeup for my honeymoon. This was the only blush that I brought for two weeks in Europe and I wore it every single day and I never got sick of it. So I just cannot say enough about this particular shade for my particular skin, but I mean, between Mimi and Bichette and Doodoo, and yes, it's called Doodoo, they all just have built-in intelligence for being super versatile as one and done blushes on different skin tones. Big, big fan. Now, if you told me I had to only pick one, it would be this. Because like I said, I did travel Europe with only this and I survived. <laughs> Very, I thrived, you could say I thrived. But if you're going to allow me to, I mean, I use the daylights out of this and it is truly one of the most versatile easiest to use blushes that I own. And this is Pat McGrath Divine Blush and Flirtatious. It's just it. It's just it. Especially because the Westman Atelier blush is quite pink. And then this has this lovely coolness to it. I did, I wanted to make kind of a unified face of makeup. Like if I'm only gonna pick one, I do still want there to be a concept. It's like I'm not just picking like the one that I would choose, but like the really dissonant colors. I wanted to stay in the color that I feel like I wear the best, which is sort of like a, neutral to cool leaning pinky purple, a, a divine rose flirtatious kind of color. Flirtatious just happening to be the one that's easier for me to wear because it's more, it's lighter, lighter color. Divine rose in this particular blush is just a little more committed. It's a little bit more main character energy. Whereas this one is just such a supporting character in everything. It does such a good job with every face of makeup. I just feel like it pulls it together. And I love the formula. I love the so yeah, I mean, you can tell because like the embossing is almost gone there. This is just so good. So if you would allow me a powder and a cream, those would be my powder and my cream. As far as powder, I went with the Kosas. This is honestly, like I've tried so many powders recently and I do really like a lot of powders, but as far as versatility is concerned, the beauty and the wear time and the just the agreeability with so many different situations the coast is cloud set 
I have airy, but they have a lot of shades in this. It's so beautiful. It's a little bit brightening. It adds a tiny, tiny bit of coverage. It blurs just a little bit. It mattifies just a little bit. It's like the perfect Goldilocks medium for everything that you want from a powder. Plus it's pressed. I know that, you know, that's not everybody's thing, but like, I like having a pressed powder. It travels better to me. It's just less messy. It's easier for me to just like uh, do it, do do you know, like just cram a brush in there and go. This one has never hard panned on me. I really, really dig my brush in there and it never cakes up. It never looks like exaggerated or, you know, makes a buildup of color on my skin. It's just the perfect medium across the board. I really, really love it. And it does kind of like add a hydrated sort of youthful appearance to my skin too. I feel like it helps with hydration somehow. I don't even know how powder does that, but it does. Speaking of hydration, I mean, this is the only finishing spray that I really reach for anymore. I reach for it before I do my makeup, after I do my makeup, during doing my makeup. It melts everything down and it, it just puts a little bit of a soft focus on everything because, you know, even on the best day, sometimes things are just not blurred enough. And this does so many things all at once. This is the Fix Plus from MAC. Did I say that already? It has this beautiful like glycerin-y finish that makes it look like your makeup all had the same mood you know, it kind of like unifies the mood of your makeup without making you like ultra dewy. Like you can spray the crap out of your face with this and you can get like a lot of shine, but I just do like a light, 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 you know, like one, two, three, and it just sets everything, melts everything together and, and soft focuses all of the maybe imperfect blending that I have on my face. It makes it look more like skin. Okay, for my eyes, like I said, I'm going with a theme here. I had to go with a color story and my jumping off point was really this. This is Divine Rose 1, Mothership 7? Mothership 7 from Pat McGrath. And it is one of the more tame color stories, I would say, but I never get bored of it because it's like, okay, this here is like everything that I would ever need day to day. And then we have excitement up here. These are like our wild cards because like this one shifts so many different colors. It's like beautifully like pinky, goldy, orange. This is actually a really lovely, like almost like a micro glitter, but it's, it kind of comes off foily. It's just a really, really pretty gold that, you know, just steals the show. Big, big like main character energy on that one. This is something that I dream about it's just the most unbelievable celestial. It's like a confetti, really. It's just like past celestial. It's, it's just this like starburst of beautiful champagne. And then this one will really surprise you. It's kind of this like blurring, barely there, kind of like iridescent duochrome. Pat McGrath, I always say she will enamor you with her color stories, but then when you put them on your skin, you will still be pleasantly surprised by the results. I was saying something was really good, but it didn't surprise me. I don't remember what it was I was talking about. Like there is something to be said for something that's really, really good, but also doesn't surprise you. This is really, really good. And every time I use it, it surprises me. I can make the muddiest mud with this palette and it still looks pretty. I mainly lean on the combination of this like shimmery lavender and this matte lavender and this shimmery brown and the matte brown. And then this is just such a good, you know, brow highlight inner corner thing. And then this is actually like one of the plumier redder purples to me that actually is, that is very much the divine rose color, right? That's just that medium, has a touch of like a, almost like a magenta to it behind it because it does have a shift, but then it kind of shifts a little bit cooler and it just agrees with so many skin tones. It, it really, really agrees with my skin tone. And it gives me that like extremely like healthy, but also very bespoke kind of appearance to my skin. It just feels super dialed in. So this is worth 125 of my dollars all day long. I bought this with my own money. I use the crap out of it and I cannot say enough about it. It is still such a favorite for me. Quickly, my brows, 
Not that these are my favorite. I don't think that these are necessarily like the world's greatest brow products. I don't think that anything like, you know, has blown my mind in the brow department, but in terms of the formula being agreeable, very usable, and the shade range being great, I highly recommend these and they're the ones that I would rely on every single day. And it is the Airbrow and the Brow Pop. I use medium brown from Kosas, 10 shades and a clear. It's just a really, really good brow combo and it's the one that I reach for the most and it's the one that like I would miss if I didn't have it. If you would allow me a clear brow gel, I would use the Refi. If not, that's fine, <laughs> but I do like it. For my mascara, shock me, shock me, shock me. This is the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara in Crystal and it is the brown and I just love a brown mascara. I love a tubing mascara. You guys know this is like the foundation of my channel. Just found out that Venus Williams uses this when she plays tennis, so I don't think that there is a better endorsement I could get. And for eyeliner, this has really become my very reliable little eyeliner. This is the Guideline from Guide Beauty. And some people are like, it's really stiff. Yeah, it is. It's great. It really feels like when you wet a brush and dip it in a powder shadow, but it's all in one. And I just scrape my brush in there. And it's great because it draws such like a matte, lightweight, blurry kind of line. It's exactly what I'm looking for. And um, I will use this up when I am 80 years old. <laughs> There's so much in here. And finally, we shall talk about lips. This was definitely a deliberation for me because I have so many shades of lip gloss that are really similar. You guys see me swatch them against each other all the time. It's like, there's NARS Nympho, there's Victoria Beckham Bikini, there's the new one that I just got from MAC, Spite, there's Hourglass uh, Provoke, there's uh, Westman Atelier Nana, like all of these really beautiful, like cool toned, beigey nude lip glosses. And you guys know if it was going to be one lip product, like whether it be a, a lipstick or lip gloss, whatever, I'm going to choose a gloss. I'm not a lipstick girl on the day to day. It's just not something that I feel super comfortable in. And I honestly feel like this is the combo of life. I think that this makes me look like, oh, this old thing, you know, it doesn't detract from the rest of my face, but I think it makes my lips look really, really plush. And it adds that beiginess that's very like unifying for the whole color story. And it of course starts with my khaki lip liner because look, that's not the same thing, okay? you will pry my khaki lip liner from my cold dead hands. It's the best lip contour ever. And I drew freckles on with it today, so. Multi-use. And this was the one that I chose. Bikini from Victoria Beckham Beauty. It's just great. It's long wearing, it's gorgeous. It has the perfect amount of like beiginess to it that goes with every single look. If I really wanted to get more impact, I would draw more of my lip liner on and use it as a lipstick and then blend them together, but like, I can't stop looking at my lips. And it's just such a subtle combo, but it really just nails it down, doesn't it? So obviously there are tons and tons of honorable mentions here, but if I had to rebuy my stash and I was only able to get one of each thing after painstaking deliberation, <laughs> those are the things that I would do. So quick recap, In Beauty Face Glaze, Shantikai Future Skin, Item Beauty Air Hug Concealer, Just the Contour from the Magic Ta, the Bronzer from Rare Beauty, Westman Atelier Petal, Pat McGrath Flirtatious, Kosa's Cloud Set in Airy, Pat McGrath Divine Rose, Guide Beauty Guideline, Kosa's Air Brow and Brow Pop and the Refi if you would let me, Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara in Crystal, Khaki Lip Liner from Thrive, Bikini from Victoria Beckham Beauty, and finish it all off with some Mac Fix Plus. That would be the vibe. I want to not only thank Kelly Gooch for founding this tag and for keeping it going and for tagging other creators, but I also wanna tag other creators, anybody who's seeing this who's a creator, if this sparked something in you, either as a means of like taking a minimalist approach on your collection or really, really challenging yourself, I absolutely tag you to do this. So I will look forward to those. And I also, 
want to remind you guys to click the link down below to shop the buy one get one 40 percent off sale at Ana Luisa right now for Mother's Day so definitely check that out and thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video thank you guys for being here and for watching if you did enjoy this give it a thumbs up if you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel hit the button down below and subscribe I would love it if you guys did thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today I love you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one bye